Welcome to the show, No Instructions, where we meet with founders and interview them about starting and growing their businesses. I'm your host, Chad Ingram, three-time founder and CEO at Distro. Distro is a platform to help businesses build teams by breaking down borders around the world. Let's go ahead and get started with today's guest and see how they built their business. Okay, welcome to the show, No Instructions. Today, we have uh, 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 CEO of Nerd Power today, Babe Kilgore. And um, we want to hear his story. So thanks for coming in today to be with us. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, maybe bring the mic a little closer yeah. and just then so we the, got you. The official, we DBA just nerd. Oh, okay. Because now that we do restoration development work on top of yeah. just the power side. Yeah. Just for... So nerd. Future. Yeah, nerd. Yeah, and how long has uh, nerd <clears throat> been going now? So nerd was started at the end of 2015. Okay. Yeah. Um, tell us, like, give us, like, Twitter-style what is nerd mm. and then and then let's go then we'll go into you yeah. and talk a little bit about you deal yeah so nerd is a sustainable construction services company okay so we'll do anything that helps reduce power consumption mm -hmm. and then we'll provide clean sustainable power awesome. generally on site right yeah so all the way from residential to full-scale microgrids and industrial power and how do you define like clean power uh, primary tech is solar. Solar, yeah. yeah we, we've done some clean burning tech, cool. like combined heat and power systems yeah. where you put a jet engine on site, make power, take yeah. the waste heat and drive a thermal load or run it through a chemical process called absorption cooling and make cold air out of heat and right. that kind of garbage. But but really it's uh, <laughs> primarily, yeah, and it is. It's probably, probably too complicated, but primarily solar. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. Looking at you, and, and you're CEO today. Yeah. Yeah. So um, where does your story start as, as like, you and an entrepreneur, you know? Um, does it start when you were younger? Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, have you read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad before? Dude, that book changed my life. Y yes. Somebody recommended it to me when I was 21, and it literally changed my life. Um, yeah, man. Honestly influenced me completely i still have the original book yeah. and, and i'll go back and reread it sometime oh i love it kiyosaki lives yeah. lives in arizona i did not, not, not know too that. far from me yeah. yeah so that book because that's a fictional story right? he made up those yes. characters right yes. yeah and that that story is exactly my life wow so and, and love and appreciate both of my, my dads right so i have my you know biological dad mm -hmm. and he taught me a certain set of lessons and yeah. he was a school teacher for almost 40 years Wow, you know, and growing up in that side of the house, we'll call it. There's eight kids, and and not joking. If we didn't finish the milk, you poured it back in the jug, bro. And you, and I think about that now, and I'm like, dude, that's like the worst thing to share is milk. This so you were one of eight. Uh, so on that side, one yeah. of eight. So five yeah. of us that are are blood siblings, yep. and then he married a woman that had three kids. Okay. My mom married a man that had four. Okay, and on that side of the house, I was the youngest of nine. Wow, which is actually where Babe comes from. I was the last of the nine kids, the baby in the family. Yeah. So on, and on, is Babe your given name? No. So that it was. It is my legal name. It is your legal name. Okay. Yeah. It is now, but it was changed later on. Interesting. Yeah. And that, that's kind of a, a wild story because um, we'll get into that later. Yeah. But, okay, uh, okay, yeah. Okay. So on my mom and my stepdad's side, he is very successful in business. Wow. Extremely successful. Like not. Not has tens of millions, but has significantly more. Like there's and, more zeros behind and, that. And right? being a a stepchild, like, did you feel like you had the same access and like kind of love and support from him? You know, yeah. where where like you feel like he might be willing to help you at some point, you know, or yeah. coach you or whatever. Yeah, you know, I I I did. So I, in fact, I call him dad as well. Cool. You know, and and um, I have a a stepdaughter. And mm -hmm. so I understand the relationship there really well. And that kind yeah. of came full circle, yeah. but, but he, he gave me gifts that were, you know, invaluable, but they're not, they're not tangible. It wasn't like, right. in fact, it was the opposite. I got my start by learning about business because he sat me down with my mom at age mm -hmm. 12 and like, well, you're, you're a man now. And he had us buy all of our own clothes. Wow. And, and pay for activities. So the rich guy had like, instead of just solving your problem and just taking care of everything, he said, here's how you do it. Yeah. He taught That's me crazy. how to work. 
And then um, he had a really large construction company here in, in Salt Lake, right? Wow. And so I started working full time at age 13, like 50 or 60 hours a week in the summer. Yeah. Real big boy jobs. Wow. And did that for six years, but learned about the value of hard work and money. And what I was, saw both sides. What was his business? Like uh, you know, to share well, what industry or something? Yeah. So there, so if you go up North Salt Lake and you see that big cut in the mountain, yeah, it's called Staker paving. Wow. And so he had Staker and that was purchased by the, the largest construction company in the world at that time. Wow. Out of, uh, out of Ireland. Old castle. Hey, isn't there also a Kilgore construction company here in Utah? That's my oldest brother's company. Is it really? Yeah. That's so funny. You're related. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And, cool. and he's done extremely well. He did his own deal. And, and again, he didn't go to my stepdad for support, but learned yeah. great lessons about work with him. And, and, you know, he sold his company and they're, they're now buying companies under his platform. That's in fact, awesome. they closed on a company a couple of weeks ago and they paid $3.2 billion for the company. So oh no, my gosh. it's the biggest cement company in the U.S. now. Wow. Yeah. So, so pretty cool. Yeah. That's super cool. Wait. So now tell me about your, your dad, your biological dad, Yeah. Uh, em, employee kind of guy or, or was he an entrepreneur himself? No. So, he, so employee, but my, my dad is a phenomenal human. Yeah. Like I, I feel like uh, I could call my dad today and say, Hey, I need you to be at my house and, and pick me up and drive me to Florida. And he'd, he'd say, okay, right? but he's, <laughs> he's quieter and, and, and less, yeah. you know, less, uh, you know, in your face, he's very much behind the scenes and yeah. quiet that way. But he was a, uh, tremendous athlete. In fact, he was head coach of the university of Utah baseball team for seven years. Wow. I love played, baseball. I grew yeah, up man. a Dodgers he, fan. Oh, he yeah. played in the minors for the oh, Mets. Did he really? Yeah. Wow. And then, uh, and then he was a PE teacher at the middle school for a long time, but you know, more about, um, lifestyle and, and, yeah. and that deal and less about the entrepreneur. But I, I, it, what I got was I got the rich dad, poor dad feel in real life. Like yeah. I experienced and I saw it and it was, it was fantastic to see, to see both aspects. Cause there's parts about being an entrepreneur where you're constantly, you're constantly doing things you have to do and putting out fires with all yeah. that weight. But I saw my dad and his happiness where I learned to balance some of that with family too. Totally. Yeah. I remember, you know, it's hard sometimes because like when you are an entrepreneur and you love what you do and, and you love like, it's not just the money and, and there's a lot of entrepreneurs that don't have or make money. Right. But like being an entrepreneur gives you like the space to have freedom to create, right. Like to go, to go challenge yourself. Mm. It's about winning. Yeah. It's about competition. Like mm. that's what drives a real entrepreneur. And um, so anyway, like it's easy for us to like, fantasize that and talk about how great it is and stuff. But the truth is most people are not built for that. Mm -hmm. I remember years ago before I had started my own first business, it was like, I was just about to start college. And I remember talking to somebody who was in academics, actually, it was a, like a tenured professor in mathematics at, at a, um, Cornell university, mm -hmm. also a great university in New York. And, and I was talking to him about like, I really, cause my dad, my dad was a small business owner growing up. And I saw like feast and famine and all that. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, I was going to, to this person who's in, in the academics. And I was like, at, like wanting their blessing about my idea to go be a lawyer. And his response to me was, you know, somebody's got to build buildings, right? Somebody's got to do construction. Like, mm -hmm. and his point was that it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just like your dad, you know, he might have been super happy doing what he was doing. He just did it different than your, you know, stepfather. Yeah. It was just different. Yeah. And my, my, um, my stepdad has an ins insatiable appetite mm -hmm. for, for, you know, deals and business. <laughs> and he is yeah. very good at it. Yeah. And my dad, and they're both happy in their own right. Cause my stepdad loves that side. And my yeah. dad has probably a more, not probably, he certainly has more, had a more peaceful life, right? Mm -hmm. And easygoing life, but you're yeah. exactly right. It is not easy to be an entrepreneur and it, it takes um, so much grit. <laughs> it's hard for people to stay in it long enough to see the success of it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, would you say that almost daily you have a WTF moment? Like we are like, why the F did that just happen? <laughs> like, da like daily or are you talking about hourly? hourly? Like, yeah, yeah man. Exactly. It, it, yeah. It just, just, you know, <laughs> I, I call it, um, 
it, I, I call it, you know, it, it, having businesses when you're the, an entrepreneur and you're running a business, it defies gravity because mm -hmm. all, all that shit rolls uphill. Like I, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I call sure. it the manure shell, the, yeah. the little detail crap you got to deal with all rolls uphill. Yeah. And so that, um, yeah, it's just dealing with that all the time. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so you're in school, you know, as, as a teenager, maybe like in high school, did you do well in school or did it feel like, uh, was it like forceful for you to be there? No, I, you know, I had this kind of odd paradoxical blend of ADHD <laughs> with OCD. I yeah. know those kind of come hand in hand a bit, but I'm yeah. very much a rule follower. Okay. Uh, very by the book in business, you know, I never want to cut corners ever. Yeah. And so in school I did well because I, I, I would feel guilty if I wasn't studying or producing results. Interesting. And so I actually, you know, I was on academic scholarship in college from my grades. Right. And so that, that was really useful. Yeah. And, uh, where'd you go to college? Uh, so I went to BYU, BYU uh, Hawaii for the first okay. year. Awesome. Then I went on a mission to Spain, a Mormon mission. Yeah. And then came back and finished at BYU Provo. And by finished, cool. I mean almost finished and finished like 15 years later online. Okay. That's kind of yeah. like what happened to me. So I literally left school to start my first company with three classes left. And I haven't done the gone back yet like you did. So I need to. Yeah. I had to do it for my kids, man. I got three, these, my three daughters, man, they're, they're the best. And I wanted to finish to, Definitely. just to show that. And, and yeah. honestly, part of that's that OCD where I'm like, I got to get to it. I got to finish. I got to check the box, right? <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm kind of the classic story in college where I was at the extension in Salt Lake City yeah. and I got into door-to-door -door sales, right? We're, we're here in, in Utah in the Wait, mecca the of door-to-door -door sales. The extension in Salt Lake City at the... The uh, BYU extension up there. Okay, so, dude, this is funny. I went there. That's how I got into BYU. Because, um, like, I just didn't value school, you know, right out of high school as much. Yeah. And so I did community college. And then... Uh, I, that was the, that was like the only way for some of the other kids that were rough around the edges to like, go get classes and then get into BYU. <laughs> yeah. And that's literally what I did. Uh, that's funny. But that wasn't not part of like the actual BYU itself or it's so a different. It, it was like an extension. The only okay. difference was, is that you had to pay cash for your classes. So you couldn't get student aid, but there were oh, BYU nice. professors, BYU classes. And then, so I did that. I got A's and I had a good enough GPA and they got a BYU. Just getting it done, so, bro. Yeah, okay. I mean, Taking that so, back door. No yeah, big deal. Seriously, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So I, cool. I had like classes up there Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, cool. And the just the like textbook story about getting recruited into door to door sales. Yep. And for me, it was I'd done six years of asphalt construction in my stepdad's company. Yeah. Working hard. And I was, you know, I was making 10 or 15 grand a summer. And, yeah. and what I was not learning is the social and communication skills required to run a business or do something else. In my original story, I was going to be a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Russ, you were going to go do the safe thing like yeah. I was, like yeah. a lawyer. So I, I, I had it's taken funny. and and still to date have taken zero business classes ever. Yeah. And so I was all the hard sciences. I took the MCAT and, and literally had my car packed and went out for the summer to sell straight from the MCAT. And that, that so I did, I did, uh, five summers for another company wow. that second summer with them is when I managed and, and had the car packed went out and for, and for people that don't know, like these, when you, you know, when you're talking about this, this summer program, like yeah. the way that these door to door sales companies do is that they take advantage of the summertime that students are off. And a yeah. lot of these students can go work their butts off in the <clears> summer, <throat> make a bunch of money and then go back to school and live on that money. Right. Exactly. Right. And yeah. so it's, it's a great win win. And these kids get like real life experience, you oh, yeah. know? And so you were one of those people. Yeah. 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 So I, I, not only was the money really great and, and no, like shying around this, like you work, like you work for a year in that summer. You like it's, like it's, it's hard. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. But yeah. I, I would take all the money I ever made in, in door to door sales and keep the skill set for communication. Absolutely. It was fantastic. But Absolutely. that, so that second summer I went out and made great money and I wanted to originally be a, a pediatrician. Right. <laughs> And I look back now and I'm like, Kid, kids hate me. Like, wow, how, yeah. that would have never worked, man. <laughs> would have never worked. But I, I, I ended up getting offered to run the sales and recruiting platform for this company. Okay. And no, hold on. Let's talk about you yeah. doing this though. So like, do you happen to remember your first sale the first summer? Oh yeah. So 
here's the crazy part. Like how exciting that was. Oh, it was. I remember the guy. I remember oh, where yeah. it is because oh, I yeah. did it, you know. Oh, I remember my uh, first, second, and third sale. The, my third sale was actually a, a blind guy. I'm not taking advantage <laughs> of anybody, but bro, I'm like, this dude was growing yeah. cannabis in his backyard. No so, I was in home security and wow. he wanted a couple of sensors on the gate system because <laughs> the kid, the local kids are still in his cannabis. Can you imagine? Like, Let's go steal cannabis. Yeah. Let's go steal some weed from the blind guy. <laughs> yeah. That was legit. That was my the third sale. Guy, yeah, and, and, uh, and actually he didn't, he didn't pay his bill. It was a charge back to yeah, me. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, hundred percent. You'll never forget that one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I, I, I went out and then I got offered to run the recruiting and sales platform because I, I went up my first week, yeah. bro. I sold zero my first week mm -hmm. and I actually didn't have enough money to like put gas in the car to drive yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I'm trying to think like, what do I do? Do I borrow money and drive home? And I went and bought, bought a sales book and rescripted hmm. my approach. And then I sold 11 the next week, which was top, top guy in the office. That's yeah. not like, look at me. It was more that I learned that sales was something that's really controllable and a learnable skill set. So I became really did, obsessed with sales psychology. Did you feel like, did you feel scared at all? Or did it, you feel like there was kind of a natural, like, no, I got this. I'll freaking figure this out. I, I, I felt intimidated. Yeah. Okay. The process. I, yeah. I, I didn't know what I was going to do for money yeah. and I'd always had these summer jobs, but I always came down at the end. My, my, the gas tank was empty by the time <laughs> I got to the summer, man. And I hadn't refueled, fueled the tank yet. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, so that yeah. I ended up catching on and, and finished top top in the company that year, and then next year the managed. Company. Yeah, yeah, that's and a it, huge deal. It, yeah, these companies are not small. There's yeah, there's they, a lot of people. These guys early on were not not super big. I think they sure. st started maybe sixty guys. That's still like a that. lot. Yeah, yeah top it, of sixty is still a lot. Yeah, but the, what was crazy is the second year managing, mm -hmm. they offered me to run this position, and I, in my mind, I'm like, do I go to school? Yeah, or do I go run this platform? Because they asked me to put school on hold. <laughs> and I actually, I actually put both bags in my car the day school was supposed to start. And really? I started driving. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I showed up at work and I unenrolled in school. And part of it was because I made more money than I would have as a pediatrician in that one summer. <laughs> and I realized like, man, there might be easier ways to make money. Yeah. And so it, it worked out great had a great experience doing that and was there for five years before i opened up my own with company. the same company same company okay yeah i'm very much a loyalist by by so by and this so this was an alarm company at one yeah. point okay um and is it any one of the big ones that we know about today no they're, they're actually out of business now oh they're gone okay yeah, they're gone, yeah. did they get acquired or go out of business they went out of business okay yeah <laughs> so it's a good thing you made a move right no, yeah so they, they they went out of business and this is just to for those out there that are thinking do i do i do i take the leap and do something on my own part of it is the way in which you do that can create problems or be a huge help. And so I, I actually called these guys and told them I was leaving. They said, go get an offer. We'll match it. So I went and got an offer okay. to set up my own alarm company. Yeah. And I tried to call, tried to call, tried. They wouldn't return my phone call <laughs> and they served me with papers. Stop it. They sued me. And I actually, <laughs> I, I had about at this time, probably 40 to 45% of the company of all the sales all reported up to me. Wow. And I didn't take one single person from the company. I moved to another state. Yeah. I did it in a whole other market. And so you did it honorable, right? Yeah, and, very and in much a free so. Market, you're able to go. Oh, start I even told them about it. Thing, right? Yeah. yeah, I even told them about it. So, you know, they sued me, and then two years later, they they went out of business. About a year and a half after that, and so all you that didn't all give that any money, went, right? No, no, all, okay, all that went, all that it all went away. Yeah, yeah. I, sp I probably spent a quarter million bucks on attorneys' fees, though. Oh, it's a lot, dude. Yeah. You know what's funny? So my so my first startup, mm -hmm. I started in 2000, late 2012, mm -hmm. 2013, I was like 25, you know, I was really young, mm -hmm. young and dumb, right? <laughs> Figuring it all out along the way, like put everything on a credit card, yeah. like risk it all. And uh, we got our first like lawsuit or threatened to a lawsuit. It wasn't actually a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And, and some, it was a, it was a cold call and it was a TCPA claim. Somebody wanted to, to shake us down for like $3,000 mm -hmm. and I'm like tripping, right? <laughs> like, I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know, it's, it's money. And then also yeah. like, uh, did I break the law? And I call my brother who's an attorney and he's kind of chuckling. And I was like, what's so funny. And he's like, well, you're important now. And I was like, why? He goes, you're important enough to sue. Congratulations. <laughs> you made it. Yeah, you made it. It's like, this is part of it. And then somebody else told me like, you know, if you don't have the stomach for that kind of stuff, don't start a business. Oh yeah. 
it's just part of the process. Yeah, you know? and you you acclimate you acclimate over time. So yeah. that, that was the first time I'd ever been sued. Because right. again, I'm an extremely by the book person. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, think about how crazy this. I I told my existing company I was going to go create the company because I wanted to make sure they knew they were cool. Yeah. yeah. And I, I didn't have to legally do that. And no. I could, I already moved to a new state, you know, and, <laughs> and, and so that's how by the book I am. And bro, but I was, I was in the cold sweat. Like when I got that deal, yeah, I didn't right. sleep for a couple of nights. Like, yeah, I bet. And, and if something happens now where somebody's trying to shake us down and, and, and how do you look at it now? Like, God, oh, stick okay, it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't happen super often for us, but like, um, yeah, yeah, for you, sure. you acclimate to some of that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It just doesn't quite like hit you as hard as, as a leader. You need, yeah. and it's just an unfortunate part of doing it. And you know, you do the, your best not to cause any damage to anybody else. Right. But, mm-hmm. um, okay. So what year, what years roughly are like kind of, you know, time frame was that, uh, that you were working for this other company? So this is 2001 slash 2002 up through 2005 slash 2006. That's yeah. se- that season. One, right. Yeah. Right. 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 And so I, I ended up coming down, I went to AZ yep. and started so were you my own from company. Utah. Did you yeah. Grow up I grew in up in Salt Lake City in, in Bountiful, Utah. Oh, in Bountiful. Okay, cool. So you're yeah. a Utah guy. Yeah. And for those that don't know, you know, a nerd is head, you have offices in many places, right? But yeah. you're headquartered in, uh, in Arizona. yeah, Gilbert. Phoenix area, right? Yeah, Gilbert. Yeah, Gilbert. Um, okay, I interrupted you. So uh, early 2000s, mm-hmm. you know, you're a salesman and you decide you want to start your own company. So you, you make a phone call to try and find, is it like an installer? To, to help yeah, you, put it's it really in. like a funding company that yeah. will buy contracts and, and help do the business side. And you yeah. know, you you go to start a company, and and I'm a classic sales guy that probably was a little overly confident. Remember, <laughs> a, a zero business skills, and like I, I didn't even know what the term P and L or balance sheet meant. Yeah, I'd never heard the term, man. I, I don't think I looked at that for a year. Okay, but that's such an advantage, though. Like, think about there was this one time. We had my first startup, my business partner who had more experience than me. I was kind of the younger kid learning from him. And we had an employee that like threatened to leave and he was trying to take some customers with him. And, and, you know, we were like, well, we got to do something about it. And uh, anyway, my partner who had more experience than me, I, I tell him, I go, he's going to fail. Like, let's forget about it. He doesn't know what he's doing. And he goes, that's exactly the problem. He doesn't know what it takes. So he'll go try it. Mm, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You don't get in your own way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah. like sometimes like for early founders, you're definitely going to take your lickings, but like there is some advantage to not knowing what you don't know. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent, man. I was um, a little over my skis at the beginning right. for sure. I mean, right. I, I, I probably had within two years, two or 300 employees and I wasn't wow. running financials. Wow. I wasn't doing any of that. And so learning that over time, but learning with mistakes. But I tell my key employees this too. I say, I would rather you move with speed and compression Mm -hmm. and make mistakes 50% of the time than to be stagnant and never move at all. Totally. Because it gives you the ability to adapt and bob and weave and evolve and grow. Like you have to be making those mistakes. You got to just take the jump. So, okay. What is the company you started at this time? What'd you call it? It was called Siren. It was a a home security company. And were you headquartered here, Arizona? Arizona. Okay. So in there, you're selling home security. Um, Like, what is that? How do you start that? Like, did you have enough money to kind of get going? Did you just go start knocking doors yourself? Did you recruit some friends, like, how'd you actually like take that from concept to we need freaking revenue? Like, I'll, I'll say yes to all the above, but yes. like, okay. yeah. So, <laughs> so I had saved up enough money from selling before yeah. that I could at least start the operations to get business going. Right. So a lot of that is more capital intensive because you're hiring in the off season. You make all your money when you can contract customers and right. then sell that paper and bring the revenue in. Right. And so I'd saved enough to, to start doing that. So we started making some sales and then did summer platforms as we got revenue and growing the business, you know? Were you like, were you excited about it <clears throat> or were you like, were there any points of like major fear? Like you're on your own now at this point. Yeah, it, it was, it was difficult. So, um, there is no manual of like, right. here's how to start your company and how to run it. Like yeah. none of that exists. And I'm like, the crazy part is people are willing to share information with you. People yeah. that are successful generally are very open to sharing insight. Yeah. 
but I wasn't wise enough to call around and ask and get inside. So I'm just, I'm making decisions and trying to piece all together and a, a lot of sleepless nights, yeah. but I knew, you know, I had been equipped with high sales ability over time because I studied the art of sales. And mm -hmm. so I knew that I could sell my way out of problems per se. Yeah, yeah. And, and unfortunately that, that reflects in the financials down the road, but I wasn't yeah. smart enough to know that at the time. <laughs> You know, so so grew that for for a couple of years, and then ended up in that company is actually where I got started in energy. Okay. Yeah. So I was getting um, J one visas and bringing in Canadians wow. to work. So really? out, yeah, outside. What was of, the advantage of doing that? Well, man, man they, they have a fantastic work ethic and a yeah. great culture to them, and and uh, you know, I say them like they're some alien, right? But oh, uh, yeah, yeah I mean, but they, but, yeah, you know, outside of probably a return Mormon missionary. Yeah. That's probably the highest performing rep that we would get. Really? They were fantastic. You know who we used to love? Like, so mm. I sold, I sold uh, three summers in college. It was, it was a fantastic experience. Like teaches you so much of what you need to know. So yeah. like, I highly recommend it to any young kid. You so said Robert Kiyosaki, uh, recommends go join an MLM. Yeah. I recommend go Go do summer sales. Yeah, like it just teaches you so much. What Dave Ramsey recommends it, man. Yeah, totally, yeah. and and it's it's powerful. Like, um, but uh, oh, the guys I had the best experience with, and I say guys literally, like it, we. I think I had, I think there was one girl that I ended up selling with, and she sold. Yeah. She did good. Yeah. Um, anyway, the uh, like the best guys were from Idaho. They oh, were yeah. like farm boys, and they worked so hard. Yeah, they man. just like move pipe all summer. Now they knock doors all summer. My VP of sales is a, is a farmer from Idaho. There you go. And he's a sweetheart. <laughs> he he, he works his ass off. He's the best. <laughs> totally. So these Canadians, though, man, the, the probably the one, I, I wouldn't even call it a downside, but like the rumor about how much Canadians drink is so true. <laughs> Bro, uh, it'd, be, it'd be a regular Tuesday night, it. man. These guys are blasted out of their mind. Like they can barely <laughs> walk across the room. I'm like, and the next morning they're up and about, like right. nothing had happened, sharp <laughs> as an ax, man, just crazy, so, crazy, but real. So um, where'd you get the idea for that? I, I do know, so I have a sister that lives in, uh, in Gilbert. When I met with you a couple weeks ago, or was that last week? Uh, down in Arizona, I went to yeah. visit my sister. Her husband's Canadian, mm. and uh, apparently, there's a lot of Canadians that have homes in Arizona to Massive. escape the winter. It's they're like called, super common. They're called snowbirds. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I'm, like economies change when right. Canadians come down. I mean, it's, it's, it's a real funny. deal, man. Yeah, so yeah, that's cool. I got the idea from about doing solar from a Canadian. Really, Canada was slightly ahead of us in in the green movement. Yeah. And so I'm interviewing in the summer, the management team, one-on-one, -on -one, I'm at down San Diego interviewing guy. And he's like, Hey, we should look at doing solar. And this is in 2008. Wow. 2008 or 2009. That's that season. I think one of those seasons. And so I look at him like solar, like solar panels on a house. And it wasn't popular at the time. Like yeah. this is probably, you know, seven, eight years ahead of most people getting into it. And so I made him a deal. I'm like, look, I'll look at extending your visa. And we'll go out and we'll see if we can make this solar thing work. I looked up and saw the Clean Energy Reform Act getting formed. I'm like, man, I, I see political dollars getting into energy. Yeah. Like, I think this is going to be probably a pretty big deal. And so we started to look at leads and, and we got leads in and we did a little home show that we had planned on home security and flipped it to solar. Wow. So I went out to the very first lead with him <laughs> and we're sitting across the table with this guy in Phoenix. And at the time, pricing was crazy because solar panels were, were not, not joking. What year was this? 10 right? times more expensive. This is in 2000. 2009, I think. 2009, okay, okay. yeah. So um, <clears throat> we're sitting across the table with this guy, and I'm exp I'm drawing on the back of a stupid sheet of paper because I don't have collateral material. I'd called like GE Capital and and Wells Fargo and put together these small finance platforms because these crazy finance systems for what we do today they didn't it exist. Didn't exist. Yeah, no, and it wasn't there. Too new. So this this guy goes, T tell me the name of the company. I tell him the name of the company. He reaches down, puts his checkbook on. He goes, what was the price again? And it was sixty four grand. Dude cuts a check for sixty four grand, slides it across the table. I'm like trying to act like I do this all the time. Like my jaw yeah, dropped yeah. to my <laughs> chest. Right? I'm like, like alarm deals are worth what, like ten thousand or something like that, right? Like uh, oh, this they're was worth much like, more back then. Though an alarm account was worth like fifteen hundred bucks. Oh, yeah, it was much less back much then. Much less I back bet. then. So yeah. we wow. get a, I get a check for sixty four grand acting all casual and I leave that house more. I'm, I look at this guy and I'm like, we are going to make so much money. And it was crazy. <laughs> we ran leads the rest of the month, but we didn't sell a single account the entire 
Oh, really? Of I think I found the only guy yeah. in the entire state <laughs> that wanted to go solar. Happened to be our first lead. So That's so funny. we ended up having to adjust the model and shift yeah. all that around. We moved the, the whole business plan around and went to energy efficiency and a whole different component. Did you, okay, so was there this like um, cannibalization where you're like, all right, we're going to end the alarm thing or like, hey, let's drive both. Let's use this to fund the the start of this other thing, like mm. of, of the solar, you know, offer. Is that kind of what happened or, or did you kind of go cold Turkey on something and say, we're going this all, all in this story will feel somewhat unbelievable. <laughs> so I, I guess don't Those judge me. Favorite. Don't judge me by this business sense. Okay. So th this is a legitimate true story. So we had prepped after we had experimented with energy. So in 2009, we start testing this out. So I end up flipping from selling solar because 2009, the housing market is just a train wreck, right? We yeah. can't get loans for people. Yeah. Even the sales we started to make, we couldn't get finance. So we flipped to this, this energy efficiency model where we're retrofitting houses for much cheaper. We're talking eight or nine or 10 or 11 grand versus 50 yeah. or 60 grand. Right. That we start to have success at. So we test that out January, February, March, April rolls around. We're having good success. And we're also building up for our next summer campaign for alarms. Yeah, And so we've got, um, I think it was 155 guys going out for the summer for sales. <laughs> and we've got about 60 technicians that will install those. Wow. And we have a, a an event we call uh, Super Saturday. Everyone comes in for a big sales training into Arizona. So we're, we're, we're driving guys in from really? Utah, California, Texas, all these teams. Yeah, I have the management team come in the night before. They're all supposed to go out these new markets literally on that Monday. This is a Friday, yeah. Friday night at right. my house. And I tell them, I think we're onto something in energy. And I said, right. how do you guys feel about not going on Monday? Stop it. To sell, to sell security and to go into the energy field. And we talked about it for two hours at my house, oh, gosh. bro. They're undecided. <sighs> we decide by flipping a coin. No, you didn't. I kid you not. So we Stop. We literally flip a coin and guess what hits, bro? Energy. Dude. So we flip, we, we leave one office and literally the manager's like, look, in case shit hits the fan, yeah. we're going to have the office open. You guys come out of our office and <laughs> yeah. sell. Yeah. So we, we sent 30 guys out to NorCal. And so wow. we, we converted about 125 guys. And were they, was it, were you doing like a set kind of close model back then? Or was it just like these guys would go out independently, do this deal and then get it installed. Set and close, yeah, which, which made it, okay. yeah. And so I, I tell that story, I'm, I'm probably adding some additional, you know, drama to the situation. The reality was I knew that in a lead generation standpoint, my existing in-home closers Interesting. would take those leads and be fantastic. And I had that built out yep. and modeled in Phoenix and Tucson. Yeah. And so we flipped the entire deal and a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday set of launching Dude. security, okay, what did we trained them. What did the sales guys say? Right, because oh, they were expecting bro, they, one thing. Right, they were so excited. In fact, were they we, really. By the time awesome. Monday hit and the Saturday we announced it to everybody, we picked up like another fifteen guys that wanted to be in energy from other companies. Really? And so they, so we actually they text grew their up. friends like, "Hey, dudes, yeah. like, we got this thing going. Come yeah. join us." Yeah. So we put about wow. sixty guys in Tucson just creating leads, and sixty to seventy in Phoenix. And that wasn't too many. They were able to. To handle that market with that many yeah, people. I mean, I mean, wow. three months, we, we really burned through that, that, that hood qu sure, quite a bit, but only, and we smashed it. We wow. smashed it. And, and the funny part is the day I launched it on Wednesday. So when they, when they set a lead, they have to call into a confirmation call the customer. Yeah. So I'm in there in our phone room and we've got a staff with like 25 agents. Cause I don't know how many, I don't know how well. Right. You don't know how to balance. You don't, don't know yet. I don't know yet. You just sent out an army. Around the country yes, yes. to go do this. And we're 90 minutes in. Chad, we're 90 minutes yeah. in, and the phone had not rang one time. And I look at my call center manager, I go, Mike, his name's Michael. Mike, did we make a mistake? Wow. I go, we're, we're an hour and a half, almost two hours in. Why has not one person called with a lead? Really? Literally, not one person had called. Wait, in two hours? And it was 90 minutes it cu coming up on the second yeah. hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I would have expected Something. 20 leads, 15 yeah, leads by then. Sure. I'm like, Dude, did we just burn the company to the ground? And so I look at Mike, I go, Mike, 
what is wrong? And he goes, I don't know. He goes over his computer. Oh my gosh. He hadn't freaking turned the dialer on. Stop. Had not turned the. So you dropped a bunch of calls already. Flip flip the dialer on. The all, it lights up. Every, every agent has a call in their ear. That's a lead. They're all waiting, dude. They're waiting for almost an hour. I'm like, what are you? Anyway, he, he didn't make it long. Mike didn't make it long. He wasn't very good at operations. Turns out. I mean, it it was a, I'll call it a calculated risk, but that, that's how I got into the energy. Business. Like, dude, you like get to these points and you look at these points in starting a company and you look back and be like, I'm so glad I did that. Mm, it was yeah. so scary, mm. but I'm so glad I did that. Yeah, man. Right? Well, and and you, if you don't make the move, what do you wake up in a year or two yeah. and you're in the exact same spot? Totally. Or you're just deteriorating away. Like right. I would rather make moves and make mistakes, man. Cause that's half the freaking fun. It is half the freaking fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's like, and it gives you confidence. Like once you do it and it's working, yeah. then you're willing to try something else and get it to work. Yeah, and you know? that risk tolerance opens up and you look at all these major players that have done crazy things in any industry. Yeah. And they all take these big risks that are calculated sure. and they're funded and they've got all this, they've got it buttoned up, but their risks don't it's, be yeah. mistaken, man. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, okay, what year is this roughly that you, you know, you do this big launch, you go out this summer? 2010. 2010. Mm-hmm. Okay, what about the freaking recession, right? Were you guys oh, yeah. worried at all about people spending the money or was it helpful to you to save utility money? It, you know, it was helpful in the way we scripted the sales approach. So yeah. the, the, it really was pushing more on monthly savings and savings over time, mm-hmm. you know, and, and there were issues with that model in yeah. itself. It's it's a very um, intangible savings, mm-hmm. like for true solar, which which I'm a fan of solar, yeah. And it's, but it's got to be done the right way. But solar today, you know, has a bit of a bad rap and, and there's some other challenges there. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, it's more intangible and, and we probably made significant mistakes along the way, but the recession was, was difficult in the financing part of that is yeah. getting customers financed. Yeah. And so over time I ended up, um, buying a solar company because I moved into all energy efficiency. Two years later, I bought the skeleton of a solar company, the core crew of a company that's going out of business, Okay, just pulled in their key personnel. What do you mean by layered. solar company? Like a sales company or an installing A company? solar sales and install company. Interesting. And so what we then changed our models, we called it reduce before you produce. Let's reduce your consumption and let's produce new power. And so we layered on solar. Interesting. And so it would make the home efficient and then we go back and upsell solar. In hindsight, I should have done it at the same time, which is what we do today. We yeah. do full retrofits for commercial buildings. Totally. And, and this, anything, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, uh, you know, I, I have some tech companies here. I know you guys are running your own technology as well, driving a lot of what you guys do. Um, uh, actually, customers at Distro as well. Um, but, like, and, and I bring up the tech thing because, you know, we'll have tech companies in here and many of them are VC backed, right? Mm-hmm. Like they don't make money for a long time and they, mm-hmm. you know, use that money to grow. How did you grow this whole time? Like, did you, you know, source any outside funding investors or anything like that? Like, how'd you think about keeping this beast fed? Yeah. Um, yeah, we did. Uh, there was some outside funding. Um, we put in money you know, personally and just kind of kept refueling the system. And yeah. again, looking back, man, but I, I didn't know this at the time, but I yeah. would have restructured a lot of how I did a lot of that. And then yeah. I, I, I learned business by, by really making mistakes <laughs> and seeing the repercussions as horrible as that sounds, you know? And so building that up and then, and then the volatility of the industry was tough. And our top state was Nevada. And then December really? 14th, December 8th, 2014, they change overnight their entire solar policy and kill the entire program, basically. Wow. Top producing office, right? And wow. that t- sends us into a tailspin. There's other issues there. And, and, and candidly, you know, uh, you know, went through a divorce, which, which, you know. So I was actually going to ask you about yeah. that. Let's talk about family. So you're a crazy entrepreneur driving all over the country, selling. Then you start your own company. Like, when did you get married? And when, uh, you know, when you have kids? Yeah, I got married. Um... 2003, I think it was. Yeah. Really trying to block all that. While, you, no, were, just <laughs> while you were doing, while you were a salesman for this other company at some point. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was running their sales and recruiting platform. Yeah. And got married. And, and it is, it is difficult to, to balance out family life. Like everyone talks about, yeah, it's great. It's hard. 
It's hard. Uh, specifically harder, like doing that summer program or just in general working? So, uh, you know, in general, because th- the thing about being an entrepreneur is, is you're, you're always on. <laughs> so every relationship, every conversation you have, you're on. For sure. And then you get home and, and you, t- you turn it off yeah. and you become not present with totally. your family. And so you have to keep that turned on at home. Like you, yep. you can't turn the dial down. Like no. you can only when you sleep and then you wake up and you turn that thing right back up. So six 30 in the morning or 6 yeah. a.m. It's like going again. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, um, you know, ended up going through that divorce and, yeah. and that actually had complications in the business. Cause I had sure. her folks in the business as, yeah. as, you know, and that made things quite, quite complicated and, and had to pull things apart. How and, much later was the divorce? Oh, um, that was nine years, 10 years later, something like yeah. that. Yeah. So you had full thriving business at this point. Oh, right? oh yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, like I, I had uh, dozens of companies on, on my separation deal, yeah. right? Dozens and right. dozens of companies. And so, uh, that, that was, um, complicated and sure. it did, it did have repercussions, but that's part of what you have to deal with. Yeah. Right? You gotta, you gotta pick up some of those pieces and rebuild and, mm-hmm. You know, luckily I had bifurcated some parts of that off and, yep. and, and did okay there. And then, d- and then to have some complications with it for did, sure. Did you, uh, did you guys have kids? Yeah. Two, I had two with my first, first and then, wife. and then my wife now had a daughter that now is, is, is my own daughter. You know, yeah, she's, yeah. she's like my own obviously. And, and so I got married a couple of years after that, you know, yeah. I, I did the classic entrepreneur thing where like, I'm never going to get married. Yeah. <laughs> I'm married I'm to my work. work. Yeah, yeah. I love my job. You know, and, and frankly, my divorce was amazing for my kids and, and my relationship because I had my girls and, yeah. and that was our time. Yeah. And then kind of forced one on one time yeah. with you. Oh, right? yeah. 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 I, a, much cool. better dad, much better, cool. better parent uh, after that. And then as that um, evolved, I could also take the off weeks because I had exactly 50% time with my girls and I could just, I could just work my ass off. I could work, I could work a hundred hours that week and I loved it. I got in shape and I could work and I could yeah. be really focused. So it's almost like I had these built in sprints for work. <laughs> and then the next time I, I'd have, you know, shorter work week, but still yeah. a good work week yeah. with my girls and um, told myself I'd never get married and, and then met who I'd say the woman of my dreams and, and, and that was unbelievable. And, uh, I had at the time a consultative role. So I bifurcated parts of that off, had issues with some of the divorce. Mm -hmm. A group had just raised 250 million bucks and they're like, we need to deploy this capital into a national sales platform. And wow. And that's more of my, my specialty. So I helped them essentially deploy this capital, brought in companies to do a sales platform. This is the alarm space. Wow. And so I got this really cushy job where they're paying me well. And I start getting this itch. I'll get the butt. I'm just like, ah, I look at my wife. I'm like, you know, the, the crazy part is, is I wasn't going to get back into energy per se, but yeah. a buddy of mine had landed a, a presentation to go pitch a, a $9 million energy sale. Wow. So he calls me and he's like, I need your help. I go, can you help me? Like, go through the presentation to make sure I pitch this. Well, will you pitch the deal with me? And I knew, I knew power infrastructure at the time. Yeah. I didn't know this tech specifically well. So I'm like, you know what? There's no, problem. this is on a Tuesday. He's going to he's going to pitch the deal on Friday. So, <laughs> so he goes, I'll pick you up Friday morning at five and we'll drive out to SoCal. So it's a group in SoCal that makes like the plastic crates for Walmart. Yeah. And, and they spend about 250,000 bucks a month on power. Wow. And so they're, we're going to put a combined heat and power plant in this facility and I get in the car. And I'm like, great, let's pull out the presentation. Let me see what you got. And he goes, oh, you don't need the computer. I'm like, well, then what do you have? Like a flip book? Like you got, you're growing old school, the flip book, man. Dude hands me one sheet of paper and it's a cash flow model of their savings. And he goes, that's it, man. I go, that's your presentation. You're going to go sell a $9 million project and that's what you're presenting. I was like, yeah, yeah, this should be fine. I'm like, no, it's not. It's not good enough. So I, bu- <laughs> I have to build the entire presentation on the drive to the meeting. No. And we go out there and pitch this deal. And c- crazy enough, we sold the stupid thing. We sold no the job. Way. Yes. It was 8.8 million. Right. Wow. So we sold, we sold this crazy thing. And, and you know, crazy part was they ended up losing the contract with Walmart. And so they lost their financing oh, and no. they put it on. And, and so we ended up, it, they had a cancellation of some other garbage, but like yeah. that got me back into commercial industrial power. I said, this is actually pretty freaking cool. And so I had been consulting with this group. They were getting ready to transact. They ended up 
selling for I think a billion two, and and they wow. they did well on that, and and we had uh, almost three xed their sales over that time, and but I got that bug, man, just to go out and build something again. Yeah, how was that working working for somebody else, even though it was cushy and you're making a bunch of money? Like how how did that feel doing that versus what you do now? You know, um, it was peaceful, and that peaceful side that silence was unsettling to me <laughs> as weird as that sounds That's like super weird yeah i know but I, I but i get it yeah i i i i think i think i have an awareness that i sometimes crave the chaos i like to build things and i like the challenge of the chaos i want and, to stir the hornet's nest a little bit a little bit man <laughs> Just little Just, bit. i gotta stay awake and alive you know what i mean <laughs> for sure. I'm gonna fall asleep my, over here in after life. after i sold my last business it was weird because the timing was weird because we sold uh then i i wasn't really working i was i was consulting for a couple of buddies that i just knew well and i was bored and they're like hey come help me i'm sure so but i wasn't really working and then and then the pandemic hit mm. and it was like all right i guess we're still home and so I was like home for a while and this was before I started um, driving race cars. And so like the time from when I sold and then started race cars and then later started distro, but there was a time where I wasn't really doing much. And my wife describes me like, um, like dull. Mm. There was like a sharpness that was just gone. Mm. Like the energy, the drive, like the, like the, I don't know, the, the, like, I don't know. It was just, I just wasn't, yeah. I wasn't myself. Bro, you hadn't been to the entrepreneurial yeah. gym yeah. in, in too right. long and your muscle was weak. Yeah, totally. Yes. Like my brain was not being exercised. Right. Mm. And, and I felt like dull. I felt it's weird. It's weird. And so when I went back to her to tell her I was going to do it again and she was like, for sure that to mm. do that. Yeah. You know? So it's kind of funny. Like I think people like us, it, it like confirms how you just, it's not, necessarily about the chase it's like or not necessarily about the money it's like about the chase and the winning like about the competing the challenge like i like to do hard things that's yes. just kind of my deal you oh, know I, I would rather go to the graveyard broke <laughs> and having done all the challenging than For to sure. just what put all the money in the grave i mean where's it gonna it's go true. man yeah exactly yeah. and that's another conversation i was talking to somebody like a balance of like you know let's say you do make money right and like how much do you reinvest versus how much do you play with what'd you and come I, up with so i mean you're you're, you're kind of there idea. man <laughs> yeah yeah i had this idea um my dad it, it was around like the concept of me starting to do racing because uh, and uh, off-road racing and and uh this was my dad died towards the end of 2020 uh not he not because of covid but it was during the pandemic and um and I remember my buddy invited me to go down to Baja, California to go do some off-roading in Baja in side-by-sides and stuff. And on my drive down there, it hit me. I was like, dude, life's so freaking short. Like, what is it a race to be buried with as much money as possible? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, there's got to be a balance, right? Like, definitely go out and grow it and achieve as much as possible. But like, if you're not participating in things along the way and like having fun and trying new things. Yeah. You know, not being belligerent, but like trying things that matter to you. Yeah. Dude, what for, what are we doing this for? You know? Yeah. I mean, so, not, not to get too um, personal. Sure. On it, but uh, do but it. <laughs> get, get personal, yeah, man. Whatever you want. Get weird. <laughs> I, uh, I had, uh, I kind of have one of those wake up calls. So yeah. I've got a, 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 an ultra rare kidney disease. Okay. That I got diagnosed two and a half years ago. Didn't know that. And that kind of that kind of woke me up because yeah. the the disease to to give you the short version of it is I'm my body produces an antibody that's missing a sugar molecule. Wow. And so it binds with another antibody and then it lodges in my kidney and inflames and scars it slowly over time. Is it one kidney or both? Both. Wow. Yeah, because because it, it goes through my entire system, right? right. And there's no um, cure. Yeah. There's nothing you take for it. So you can't even take something for that. No. So, yeah. So, oh, and, and, and so I kind of found out randomly cause I, I was having blood pressure issues, right. And kidneys right. control blood pressure. Yeah. And I'm on, I'm on like the max dose of like the normal <laughs> stuff. And the doc's like, this isn't normal. Yeah. I, I'm, I was at one point, you know, I looked a lot better at one point. Right. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I was, yeah. I was running well, look marathons <laughs> and half Ironman, you know? And yeah. so they're like, you shouldn't have this kind of high blood pressure. Yeah. That's weird. And so 
that wake up call for me was like, look, I'm not going to die tomorrow or in a year, but like I, I, I might not make it to 65 or 75 or something like that. And I'm kind of like, bro, life is too short. Totally. I like, do this. Th- it is not worth just getting to the end and saying, I kind of wish I tried more things. It's like, no, try the things. Cause you never, totally. you never freaking know. Totally. Yeah. 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 Totally. Like life. Yeah. Life is it's short, man. So like, yeah. you know, go hard. And I see that correlation with other entrepreneurs too. I have one friend who's, he's the worst. He's the best and the worst, mm. but he is like, I've never met a workaholic like him. I used to sit on his board, big company, uh, self-funded, grown it so fast. Mm. Like, like very, like very big, big money. Like he, um, and Dude, he doesn't take breaks enough. All he likes to do is mow his lawn and fish. And that's fine. That's what he likes to do. And I'm okay. like, okay, do that. Yeah. But I'm like, dude, you could do anything you want to do today. Go yeah. do it. And he's like, no, I need to keep working. He works a lot. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, you know? And anyway, I, I'll keep encouraging him. <laughs> yeah, agreed, man. That that that, that balance. Like, I, I don't miss my kids' activities, yeah, you know? it's good. My wife and I try to go out on a, on a date every week. And, and sometimes that means just... just getting door to ash and, and yeah. shutting the door, you know, yeah, but yeah. like, uh, but that, that stuff's important. I mean, I, I, it, it just woke me up to where if you truly want to run a business and have family and have it all, yeah, then, then you got to say no to the stuff that doesn't really change the game. Like yeah. you, you, you find yourself scrolling through Instagram for two hours and you're like, I mean, wasted time, wasted time. Totally wasted time. Yeah. And people, have you seen this sh- TV show? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I've never heard of it. Yeah. What are you talking about? And, yeah. I, and so, I, and I'm not, trying to you know yeah. preach or anything like that but like some of that is it is what it takes to have have the family life and the business True. life and and the health to some degree and you True. can't let that slide so all right so you're doing this again um so wait that that deal you go to pitch in California is that is that the early kind of start of what becomes nerd yeah so i i, I pull those guys aside after yeah I go look that's not how i do business I'm not going to have this. I'm like, I'm not going to stamp my name on something and say, look, I'm going to start a company called nerd power. Mm-hmm. And it was originally called nerd power. And now we go by nerd because nerd. we've acquired a few companies and we do much more than just power. Right. But, so I got into the commercial industrial space doing do, from that one meeting and got back full time into building out, you know, power plants for, right. you know, schools and, and some other locations that are, that are pre-sizable. Yeah. And so, um, you get married sometime later, right? Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. So you would have been married probably again. At, yeah. 2015. Yeah. So your wife now, how does, uh, you know, and you're a little bit more established as an entrepreneur. You've got some time on your belt doing mm-hmm. this. Like how, how does it, do you feel like maybe you're balancing a little bit better with your family now, or do you feel like it kind of is a tug of war at times still? No, no, it, it's significantly better. That's good. And it's not perfect. I, I need to yeah. be aware at home to be more present, but I, I don't, I travel only kind of when necessary, yeah. right? You can do so much more now with tech as well. And yeah. and it's much more balanced, but my my wife has been um, exceptionally understanding. So she, she didn't come from money. Mm. And so, you know, seeing her as a single mom for a period of time and, and pay, paying her own way. Hustling. Her daughter. And she, she did great. And like, but, but she, we'd go buy something and it'd be like, you know, it'd be like, be like 10 bucks or 50 yeah. bucks. And she's like, are you, are you sure we should buy this? And I'm like, who the hell are you? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I, I love you so much. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so she really appreciates that side and, yeah. and she's been incredibly supportive. That's cool. Yeah, it's been really, it takes, it takes a special partner to yeah. be married to a crazy entrepreneur because oh it's like, there's just always surprises, right? Yep. Stress has come and go and it's, it's definitely tough. Um, so when you start this company nerd, do you, do you go and, I mean, you've had some success yourself. You may have had already some money. Were you able to kind of fund it and get it started yourself? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. funded it myself. Yeah. Uh, and what about partners? Did go, you, well, did so, you recruit anybody or, yeah, so or I did ended up bringing in, I brought in two partners early on, uh, and part of that I would say is, is somewhat from necessity because you go out and you, you land a, a multi-million dollar project and you're like, okay, this is going to be <laughs> cash intensive. I don't, yeah. I don't have that. I, you know, I, frankly, I didn't have that kind of depth. Yeah. I had some success, but ha- had some depth, but, yeah. um, that was useful. And, and these guys came from the construction world and, and 
had them for a period of time of, for a couple of years. Yeah. And as the business grew, I ended up buying, buying them out yeah. in very, very, uh, amicable and, and yeah. fantastic relationship and, and high quality human beings, yeah. you know, the, the best they come. Yeah. And so ended up buying them out because over time, you know, I'm doing these commercial projects and then a guy that was selling residential energy work comes to me and he was selling commercial on the side for me, just sending right. referrals. And he's like, Hey, I know you had a resi thing. Can we, could we look at doing residential again? And I'm like, no, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to deal with homeowners and sales reps. Are you kidding me? My life is great. Right. And he finally convinces me, you know, and, and, you know, 60 days later, we've got like 30 guys selling. I'm like, you tricked me, <laughs> you son of a bitch. You tricked me. You know? and, so, and, and that's the guy that still is my VP of sales today. That's awesome. Yeah. And so we, we ended up building out that whole side and we've done you know, a number of acquisitions now and yeah. not, not super big. You know, my company's yeah. got, I'd say around three to 400 employees. Yeah, but you're total. not small. You're not no, small not, for not, sure. Not small. Yeah. We're growing. Yeah. But definitely growing. Uh, so I know, I know Brian decently. And at what point did Brian join you guys? So Brian was my number three hire. No way. Yeah. So one, there that long. one guy that came in to sell, I hired Brian to come sell on the side he sells, he starts selling commercial jobs. And then as we start growing that residential side, I look at this dude who I'm like, this guy is an ultra intelligent guy. He's very smart. He is extremely smart. And he starts helping me build out the presentation tools and he starts getting the operational side. And I'm like, can you just run my operations, man? And he's a sweetheart <laughs> of a guy. He says, yes. And so he's been my, my ops guy and my guy for a long time. And and I ended up bringing in some partners over time. And then a couple of these acquisitions did some partnership deals. That's awesome. And we, you know, with the goal to do, do a transaction and do something kind of cool and take it national and do some fun stuff that we're planning. Yeah, that's cool. So we've only got a couple minutes left, but you know, you know, for other people maybe getting started or thinking about starting a company, like what, what advice would you give them? You know, there's so, there are so many people willing to help and share their story and experience, even in the industry they want to go into. Yeah. If I could do it over, I would take some time to shadow all parts of the business because wherever you come from in a business, before you start your first one, you've got just, you're looking at this, this intersection from just your corner. You might be in yeah. sales, you might be in operations. You got to see the full scope and then, and, and then it will save you massive headaches down the road. And then I, I'd probably say number two is make sure you have more fuel in the tank, hmm. probably more capital than you think you might need. It's better to get to the finish line than to just burn out, you know, 10 yards from the end. Yeah. And so I think that's helpful. Yeah. That's great. That's great advice. If anyone wanted to reach out to you either about solar or just questions maybe as, as a leader, like how would they get a hold of you? Uh, so website is nerdpower.energy. Awesome. Uh, and my, I'm great if they want to email me directly. Yeah. It's just babe at nerdpower.energy. So B-A-B-E, yes, you heard it right. It's a, <laughs> it's a weird name. Yeah, and, and happy to have them reach out or email. And and I love helping folks. Man, I'm very much uh, collaboration over competition. Yeah. So even if you're in solar and you want help or in energy, because I, I, we do solar, but we're yeah. much, much more than just solar. Yeah. Want to get into it, reach out. I'm happy to help. That's awesome. Thanks for uh, taking the time to share your story. Yeah, and thanks for having me, man. I appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Thank you for listening to today's episode of No Instructions. Feel free to leave us a rating or review wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe so we can continue producing these podcasts. Today's episode was brought to you by Distro. Distro is a platform to help startups find, hire, and pay employees in over 200 countries. It's free to use. Go to distro.io to set up your free account today.